Okay, let's look at asset retirement by exchange for other non-monetary assets, both with commercial substance and without commercial substance. That is a mouthful. Let's just look at trades. So let's say that we sold a piece of equipment that was on our books for 28820 and we got $43,600 worth of cash. This is from page 11-31 of your book. Cash is an asset, assets increase with debits, so we debit cash for $43,600. We take the accumulated depreciation off our books that was associated with this machinery. We take the original cost of the machinery off our books, and we balance that journal entry with a credit of $14,780. And that makes sense. We got $43,600 cash. This asset was on our books for a net book value of $28,820, so we made $14,780. What if instead of cash, we got a new piece of delivery equipment that had a fair value of 43600 Then all we do instead of debiting cash is we would debit the asset delivery equipment. That starts with an E. And instead of a gain on sale, we'd have a gain on exchange. And that is the way the world works almost all the time. But since this is intermediate accounting and we have to make everything complicated, let's look at some changes to that scenario. The first change that our book looks at is, suppose we don't know what the new equipment is worth, but we know what our old equipment is worth. I can't imagine any real world circumstances where the value of our used equipment is more easily determinable than our new equipment but we're inter intermediate accounting and that's the way of the world. So we know in the books example that our old equipment had a fair market value of $25,000. So that's the fair market value we will assign to the new equipment that we got. So we'll debit delivery equipment for that value. We'll take the old accumulated depreciation associated with the machine off our books. We'll take the old machine off our books at cost and we'll end up with a loss on exchange of 3820, which makes sense. We got new equipment that evidently must be worth $25,000. We gave up equipment that was on our books for $28,820, so it makes sense that we would have a loss of $38,20. Gains or credits, losses are debits. Next example, same facts. We know our used equipment is worth $25,000, but we have no idea what the new equipment is worth. But in addition to giving us the equipment, the dealer gives us $3,000 cash. We debit cash for $3,000. Now we're going to have to decrease our delivery equipment from $25 to $22 to make this journal entry balance because what we got was $25,000 worth of value. We know that because we gave up $25,000 worth of value. We gave up uh, net book value equipment at $28,820, so we still should have that same loss of $38,20. We just have to reduce our basis in the delivery equipment down to 22,000 to make it make this journal entry balance. So as I say, here's the cash coming in. Here's the plug figure. Our delivery equipment must be on our books at 22,000 to make this journal entry balance because we take the old accumulated depreciation off our books. We book this loss on exchange and we take the old machinery off our books. So far, everything we've talked about has what's called commercial substance. Something really happened. Now let's talk about trades where there is no commercial substance. So two companies, Republic and Logan, have molding machines. They're both worth $16,000. And they're just going to trade them. Republic's was on its books for $14,000. So it's trading something on its books for $14,000 to get something worth $16,000. So you'd think that'd be a $2,000 gain, but since we're accountants, we don't let companies book gains on transactions that don't have economic substance. From Logan's point of view, it's also getting a machine that's worth $16,000, but its old machine was on its books for $16,300. So you would think that that $300 difference would be booked as a loss, and you would be correct. Again, no economic substance, no commercial substance. You don't get to book any gains, but we're going to make you book some losses.
So let's look at it from Republic's point of view. They get an asset worth 16000 They gave up an asset with a book value of 14000 So you think there'd be a nice little gain, but since there's no commercial substance to this transaction, all we're going to do is put that new equipment on our books at the book value of the old equipment. We debit the new machinery for 14000 We take off the old accumulated depreciation. We take off the old equipment. From Logan's point of view, it gives up an asset that was on its books for 16300 to get an asset that's only worth 16000 So it has a loss of 300 And even though this transaction has no commercial substance, we're still going to make them book that loss. So we'll put the new equipment on the books at what it's worth. We'll take the old equipment off our books by taking the old accumulated depreciation off our books and the machinery at cost off our books. And to make that journal entry balance, we'll balance it with a loss on exchange. Remember, gains are credits, losses are debits. Please don't forget that all these situations we're talking about here are things that don't happen that often. But all right, the next thing that doesn't happen that often is an exchange where we change the facts a little bit here. We say that Logan's machine is now worth 17,000. So for Republic and Logan to do this trade, Republic has to throw in $1,000 worth of cash to make this deal happen. So now we have a transfer of a small amount of cash in an exchange. Okay, so from Republic point, Republic's point of view, it's getting a machine worth 17,000, giving up a machine that was on its books for 14 and cash of 1,000. So it's giving up 15 to get something worth 17, but it doesn't, again, get to book the gain because this thing does not have commercial substance. So instead of booking the machinery on our books as we did previously at 14,000, we're going to increase it up to 15,000. So that accounts for the thousand dollars worth of boot that was paid. So the machinery goes on our books at 15,000. That's a new piece. The old stuff comes off. The old machinery comes off at original cost. And we credit cash for a thousand dollars because we paid a thousand dollars cash. On the other hand, Logan is receiving cash. Since it's less than 25%, it's a small amount of cash. They're going to book some gain to reflect what percentage that cash is of the total consideration they received. So the total gain is they got $17,000 worth of stuff from this uh, Republic company. Remember, they got their machine, their molding machine that was worth $16,000 plus $1,000 cash. And the stuff was on their books for just $16,300. So what they've got is a $700 gain. And even this, though this thing lacks commercial substance, since there's $1,000 worth of cash in there, we say it has some commercial substance. So we'll debit the cash. We'll take the old accumulated depreciation off our books, take the old machinery off our books, and we'll have to book some percentage of that gain. What we'll do is we'll take the $1,000 cash, put it in the numerator, and then the denominator will put the total that was received, the $1,000 and the $16,000 of value in the new machine. We'll take that fraction, multiply it times our total gain to recognize that we have $41 worth of the total $700 gain that we will recognize at this time. So we debit cash. We received $1,000 cash. We take the accumulated depreciation of the old machine off our books. We take the old machine's cost off our books. We book the gain on exchange for $4,100, $41, excuse me. And that gives us a new basis in the new machine of 15341 Example 3 on page 11-36 simply takes us back. If we have enough cash, which is defined as 25% of the transaction, 
if there is enough cash changing hands, then we do have a transaction with commercial substance and we will book gains or losses comparing what we got to the book value of what we gave up. So it would be very similar to the stuff that we did earlier in this video talking about an exchange. Big picture, if there is commercial substance to the transaction, compare what you got to the book value of what you gave up and book the gains or losses. If there is no commercial substance, book losses but no gains. If there's no commercial substance and a small amount of cash, book all the losses but only book a pro rata share of the gains. And finally, if there's a large amount of cash, 25% or more of the consideration, that is the same as commercial substance and you're back up to comparing what you got to the book value of what you gave up and booking gains or losses. Thanks. See you guys later.